Hi, Neighbor Rich here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. The thing that I wanted to do today, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun, is talk a little bit about manuals and driving a manual. Uh, you know, I, I mean, a lot of people say that, you know, that is the um, uh, millennial anti-theft device because uh, most people don't know how to drive them anymore. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 70s. In the 70s, there were a lot of cars that uh, had manuals to them. Uh, today, not so much. Uh, automatic transmissions have absolutely taken over. They've gotten way more efficient and quicker. Uh, the new, you know, double clutch you know, um, transmissions are just amazing. And they, they shift so fast, they're faster, but you lose a little bit of something in not being able to just actually manually shift a car and being able to push that clutch in and be able to put it into the gear that you want or to downshift the way you want. Now, I know you can do it with paddles, but I just don't think it's the same. It's not the same feel, and it just doesn't do it for me. Um, I've driven those cars, and they're fun. They're absolutely quick, but uh, that's not what I'm really liking. You know, I'm liking the manuals. So uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit. But, you know, honestly, when I grew up in the 70s, and the 70s were, you know, it was a great time to grow up. It really was. Uh, muscle cars were at their peak. Um, but, you know, actually the first uh, stick shift that I learned on was a three-speed on the column. They used to actually have them like kind of attached to the columns, kind of where like your, uh, your uh, windshield wipers or blinkers would be at this point. Uh, and what you did was you, um, you pushed in your clutch, you know, first was usually down. Uh, so it was up and down and then you had neutral and then you had second and third and that's how you learned how to drive a stick shift uh later on you know and certainly as you got into muscle cars and some of these others they started with four speeds on the floor um four speeds then went to five speeds then went to six speeds then to seven speeds and so the actual the corvette that i have the z06 this car actually has a seven speed uh transmission um it's manual and uh, it is so much fun to drive because of that. I mean, one of the big things is that uh, the first thing that you see is that, you know, it's got three pedals, not just two. Now, I know this seems really obvious to a lot of people, but some people may not understand that that's actually the third pedal is the clutch. So your, your left foot actually is the one that pushes the clutch in. You know, back in the day when uh, muscle cars were in, the, the the clutches were not hydraulic now today all the clutches are tr hydraulic which is a really nice option to have um, but uh, back in the day they were not and so uh, your left leg got quite a workout <laughs> because there was no question uh, you know especially as you got some of these some of these stronger like 3,000 you know 4,000 pounds of um, what was the, the the clutch pressure for the pressure plate uh that was really a tough tough thing to do and uh, your left leg uh, got quite the workout <laughs> you know most manual cars um when you have them just sitting you put them and leave them in first gear the reason you do that is because uh you know the car obviously if it's in neutral and if you don't have the emergency brake engaged it will just drift it'll just move on its own uh, so if there's any incline or, or anything at all. So you've really got to be careful about that. And the other thing is that anytime you're starting one, you nef definitely need to push in the clutch because like I said, the car will probably be in first gear, number one. And then, uh, you know, number two, uh, some cars even require uh, that you have the clutch pedal pushed down before the car will even start. So now, you know, what I want to do is explain a little bit about the uh, mechanics of a, a clutch and uh, what that actually means. You know, your engine is constantly spinning and um, you've got what's called a flywheel. The flywheel is a, a huge metal like disc at the very back end of the engine. Then next to that, you have to have a clutch plate because you're gonna put a pressure plate there and that pressure plate is gonna push up against that clutch and then connect the two so that they can spin. The thing that happens is there's a spline to the transmission and the spline to the transmission actually goes into a throwout bearing. The throwout bearing pushes on the pressure plate and that's what does your um, movement to make the transmission not be engaged. At that point, and I know this is a little technical, but I think some people might want to know this, is that, you know, that is what gives you the, the neutral. Uh, it actually, the pressure plate is engaged, the clutch is attached and pushed in to 
the flywheel and then it makes it so that then you, you know you're in neutral your engine is spinning you you can rev and all that stuff but you're not going to go anywhere once you take your foot off of the clutch then what's going to happen is the throwout bearing is going to move back out the pressure plate is going to release the direct line from the of power from your engine to your transmission then is generated now you're ready to start moving but you've got to be really careful when you're doing that especially out of first gear one of the first things you want to make sure that you know is your shifting pattern the pattern is um, different in different cars and the reverse is in different places and that kind of stuff and so you want to make sure that you just totally understand uh, what your shifting pattern is and where the gears are um, for and just you know while you're sitting with it, the car even being started just run through the gears uh, always make sure you can feel neutral neutral is always in the middle and it's loose like that um, but then you've got you know for this first second third and fourth um, then it goes on to fifth sixth and seventh which is an overdrive and of course reverse you've got to kind of push all the way over and down but uh, again every car is slightly different and every car has a different pattern and so you got to make sure that you understand and know your pattern before you really even start your car now that we've gotten some of the basics out of the way time to actually start this beast up and you're going to get to hear this Corsa exhaust which is incredible so uh, what we need to do is uh, again push in the clutch and um, then hit the button Anyhow, I'm um, waking up the neighborhood. Uh, I know some of my neighbors probably don't appreciate it, but I know at least one that will. Okay, with that, let's get started, okay? Um, now that we know that we have a shifting pattern, uh, we have the clutch totally pushed in. I, I don't know if you can see that. It's probably a little dark, but um, we have that all set up and ready to go. Uh, the um, car then goes into first gear. Now, this, this car uh, actually tells you what gear you're in. So if you're in third or you're in fourth, uh, you're in first it actually lets you know what they are and you know honestly a lot of people have a question about this rev match uh, button or not button but their paddles and um, a lot of people do have questions about these uh, rev match paddles and we're gonna explain that to you once we get going here but uh, for right now uh, we're just looking at trying to figure out how to get this car to move so we've taken the emergency brake off in this car the emergency brake is a just a little uh, toggle uh, so that's on that's off but on well, some cars you know you obviously you got to pull uh, a lever and honestly it's a good idea to always have it on anytime you're sitting neutral um, so what you do is you put it into first gear now what you have to do is just rev the car just a little bit it takes a little second see how long it takes it to drop back down you need that little extra rpm to make sure that your car gets moving and when the clutch actually engages um, you can move forward once the transmission is set so here we go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rev it a little bit like this okay and then slowly let out the clutch you're gonna actually see if you play with the pedal now I'm on level ground right now we will talk about if you're on a hill what you have to do but right now we're on level ground and what you do is you just rev this up a little bit like this get it up just a little bit because I mean you can see like standing new you know neutral just red you know just running the engine it's right around you know 600 rpm something like that you want it up close around a thousand rpm somewhere around there probably when you actually start out you let your foot off of the clutch very easily and slowly and you can feel you'll get to what's called a grab point it actually it starts grabbing you can feel it grab and it starts moving now one thing I want to make sure I tell you don't be afraid of stalling out people stall out all the time it's not a big deal you just restart your car not a big deal if you're in traffic people get nervous behind you ignore them don't worry about them at all 
just restart your car and start over again. So once you're in first gear, like I said, rev it up a little bit, let your clutch out slowly, and you're off and running. So then once you're moving, <clears throat> it's actually a lot easier at, on the other gears. You don't have to really mess with or worry about so much the RPM, although you don't want to ever drop it below what your normal idle is. Um, that will cause your engine to lug and it'll sputter and then stall out. And uh, again, that's something you just never want to try and do. So what you do is you're in first gear, you're running along, you get up to a speed or an RPM that you think is about right. And for me, I mean, most of the time when I'm driving, I'm looking at an RPM of around two to 3,000 RPM, and then you just pull it down in the second. It's really easy, and you don't need to worry about, you know, letting the clutch out slowly like you do in first gear. Second gear or any other gear, you can kind of move right along. Now, if you start getting too high of a gear, your RPMs will drop so low that, you know, your car will actually not take off or not have the response that you need if you really need to step on it. So here in fifth gear, I mean, you can see how low the RPMs are, um, and that, that is not necessarily a good place to be. So what you wanna do is you wanna downshift so that you're in a gear where you can really kind of handle um, the, the speed that you're at. Well, now I'm gonna try to explain these little rev match paddles. Um, these rev match paddles, you'll see what happens is when you hit them, uh, once you're in gear, the, the, there's a change in the color uh, for the Corvettes. They go from white to like an orange. And what that's doing is telling you that rev match is engaged. And so when you start going, you go like this and you get a little speed up. And then what happens is if you downshift, the car will automatically rev and match what your rev is. So, see, I just shifted the gears and there was no change in the RPM. That is the rev match paddle. That is what it does. Where it comes in handy is if you're doing some autocross or you know some course uh, where you've got a lot of turns and a lot of downshifting, this is really a handy little um, option to have. Over the years, I've taught a lot of people how to drive a manual. And once you have pretty much down, you know, getting out of first gear without stalling, without jerking the car and, and lugging the engine, uh, then I think you are ready to move on to the next steps. You can actually drive and go out into traffic. Again, shifting the other gears and the higher gears, no problem. Uh, down shifting, again, no problem. Uh, you can pull it down into a lower gear. Once you see your RPMs dropping a little bit too much, not a problem. Those are easy um, driving techniques that you can pick up very, very quickly. The trick now is going to be when you're on a hill. Uh, when you're on a hill, and I'm on a little bit of a slight incline here, I hope you can see, but um, what I wanna do is just tell you, what I do is I tell people, find a place like this, not a lot of traffic, just practice. Let the car actually drift backwards a little bit. And step on the brake, rev up your engine a little bit, get used to it, get the grab point to the clutch, and then make sure that you can pull forward. Just practice it. Practice makes perfect, my friend. And just make sure that you're comfortable in being stopped on a hill and being able to then still pull ahead without drifting backwards, not stalling your car so that you can move with traffic. Again, rev it up a little bit, let your clutch out slow, and off you go. Well, we're back home now and safe back in the garage. My little baby's tucked away. Uh, next will be uh, put on the cover. <laughs> but what I wanted to tell you is just have fun with it. Uh, driving a manual to me is one of the best things about having a, you know a sports car or a car that has you know a manual transmission to it. You get a real feel for the road and you can have a lot of fun with it. And that's what I absolutely love about driving this Z06. I hope you enjoyed this upload. I hope it was good for you. I hope that was something you learned. Uh, even if you already know how to drive a manual, you know, again, uh, these are the tips and tricks that I kind of use and have done with other people as I've taught them how to drive a manual over the years. And as always, I wanna just leave you with this positive thought. And that is, uh, don't procrastinate. 
I, I know <laughs> procrastination is one of those things you just want to put off. Uh, and I actually was going to put this off until some other time. No, I wasn't. I'm kidding. Um, procrastination. You know, I, I love the Nike saying, just do it. That's what we need to do. It, because the more you procrastinate and put something off, the bigger it builds up in your mind. And it just isn't going to get any easier. Uh, it's just going to get more and more difficult for you to get motivated to do it. So again, just be careful of procrastination. Go for it. Just do it. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, this is Neighbor Rich. I hope you enjoyed this upload. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate all you guys and uh, have a wonderful day. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, if you come to a tunnel, you got to do a little rev bump. After all, we are in a Corvette. <laughs>